So we've had just a little bit of a situation developing with the chilies. And to say they haven't been looking particularly healthy is quite possibly a little bit of an understatement. So this all kind of kicked off as around about a week, maybe sort of 10 days ago, when in the chat I've got with the other, the other folk from the potty mouth there, we were sort of talking about our chilies and how JB, you know, JB's the chili expert and he sent his pictures and they were looking marvellous. And Tony's are looking okay and Jesse's are looking good. And I shared mine and mine are just looking a little bit sad. And I've kind of, I've kind of been aware of it for a few weeks. I've been keeping a little bit of an eye on them and they haven't been looking great. And it's like, oh, what's wrong with them? But for me, it's just the case of sort of logically stepping through different things that could be causing problems with them, trying to eliminate them, trying to make things better, trying to get them to grow on, but I'll show you that in a minute. Let me just show you how they're looking. So the picture I showed you just before, like you say, that was maybe about 10 days-ish ago, and they really were looking very, very sad. But I'm pleased to say, hopefully you can see now, things are looking a little bit better. Certainly on this side, they've picked up massively. Let me spin you around there, and we'll show you the ones on this side as to how they're looking. And certainly on the top, you can see they're looking a lot more green than they were beforehand. So really with peppers, you want those really sort of dark green sort of coloured leaves for them. And I was a bit, I say, they were just looking so sad and I was so worried. And I thought, you know, we're into it. What's it now? The start of March. And although it's, it's probably just about on the limit of being able to start some new chilies again, because especially here in Scotland, when the growing season for things like chilies, tomatoes, sweet peppers, cucumbers is so short, which is why I get them on the go nice and early. We get them under the grow lights, all that sort of stuff to give us that head start in the season ahead. So we've got a bit of a dual camera set of going on today. We've got the GoPro over here, hopefully filming the sort of potting on stuff that's going to be going on. And we've got this camera over here looking at me. So we can have a bit of a chat and a bit of potting on both at the same time. So what are we doing? So I'm coming from this sort of size kind of tray here that you can see. And we are going to go into this kind of plastic pot sort of size here. You can see them there. That's what size you on a big shout out to my mum and dad who bought me these pots as a present. Just the sort of thing a gardener would like as a present is some brand new pots. So Why am I potting them up right now? I mean, I, you know, to be honest, they're probably just not quite at the stage. I would like to be moving them out of the cell trays that they're in at the moment. Then maybe, you know, another couple of weeks on. And you can see the sort of root systems there. It, it, you can see the roots, but they're not massively there, so they don't really need potting on. But I'm a little bit paranoid that the compost that they've been in hasn't been the best. So you might remember from a from a couple of weeks ago, well, quite yeah, a couple of months ago now probably. And I was I was after some compost. And I was after some of the Melcourt Silver Grow and the normal garden centre that I get it from, didn't have any. It didn't have any left and I was a bit disappointed and I happened to be in Dobby's afterwards, like a couple of weeks or however long it was afterwards, it doesn't matter. And I needed some compost and they had some special seed sown compost. So I bought some of that and it was mad expensive. It was proper expensive, like um, some stupid price, like eight pound for this tiny little bag. And I was a bit cheesed off and I don't think, to be honest, I don't think it's the compost that's been the problem here. Because, I mean, I've got other stuff in it. And other stuff, if there'd been issues with the compost, then, you know, the other things would have had the same problems. Like, yeah, roots. I'm saying it's not ready to move on, but the, the roots there look right. They are. You will notice that they do look a little bit dry. When I do come to pot things up, I do like them to be just, just a little bit on the dry side because it just makes it easier to pot them up when we're doing it. Just It's a little bit easier sort of transplanting the plants about than it is in compost that's really, really wet. So that was one of the things that I thought was the compost. So we've got some Melcourt Silver Grow here anyway. I managed to find some just a couple of weeks ago there. So it's a brand new bag that we've opened up. It's in, it's got a little bit of perlite mixed in with it. Not as much as I would use in my seed starting mix, because obviously we need these little plants at this stage to be getting plenty of nutrition. But they're there, they're potted on. This one here is, I've got the label as KS Sweet 
queen. I wish I could remember what KS stood for, but I can't quite remember off the top of my head. I wish I could tell you. And I've got four of them there, and there's one here. It looks really quite, quite sad. It's lost a leaf. It's looking a little bit pale, so I think that's destined, destined for the compost bin, that one. But again, as the plants get bigger, as they move on, I'm going to struggle for space a little bit. So we do need, do need to reduce the numbers. And I'm just going to pop these over here in the sunshine. And these will get a good, a good soaking. So they'll go on one of the seed trays and they'll get a good soaking from the bottom. So the, the compost takes up all the, all the sort of water that it needs to, to be in there, ready to get going. And the other thing that, I thought might have been wrong with these as I thought I might have the grow lights turned up too much. And that's one of the things that JB had suggested. And I said, JB's the, the resident chili expert. So I had the grow lights. So the grow lights that I've got, the Spider Farmer SF1000, it's quite good because you can adjust the, the power of the lights. So it goes from zero to a hundred. And I'd had them set at around about 40-ish, about 40 for most of the time that the light was on. So when I get up in the morning to start work at around about 7 a.m., that's when the grow light would go on. And then I would turn it off at night around about, I don't know, 10, half 10 when I'm sort of heading towards bed. So they had a good, a good blast during the day. And I didn't think 40% was too high, but we've we've turned it down a notch. We've gone down to 30% just in case and that was primarily because certainly some of these ones here the jigsaw brain the leaves were looking very purple so when your leaves are looking a bit purple that sort of thing that's generally when they've had too much light when the light's been too intense for them and they're looking a bit sort of purpley a bit dark sort of colored on the leaves then there might be a bit of an issue with too much light so just too much compost in that pot there let's just get a little bit out so we've turned the lights down and again that's maybe is a little bit of a contributing factor but i wasn't i still wasn't quite convinced that that was the the overall issue and maybe it's, like you said just a little bit maybe it's, maybe it's high maybe it's not um so we've certainly we've turned the grow lights down a bit they're still getting around about the same sort of time so they're getting about you know seven in the morning until 10 ish at night in terms of the amount of light that they're getting so it's about the same we'll just pop these over here but as we move on to the next one the other thing that was suggested and I, it wasn't really suggested direct to me but i remember hearing j because we were fascinated jb's chilies honestly they look absolutely amazing at the moment they look fabulous they look absolutely tremendous and we were looking we were sort of comparing them to tony's and tony's are looking quite good and i think jb had said that his were looking so good is because they'd had enough heat now where i've got my chilies is in the spare room in the house and i generally because it's a spare room i generally don't have the heating gone in there and the other thing that goes on in there is the potatoes the seed potatoes sit on the windowsill and that's where they chit so I don't want it to be mad hot in there for the ch for the uh, for the potatoes but I thought I wonder I wonder if it's just been a little bit too cold in there for the chilies so we've had a bit of a we've had a bit of a, a, a rearrangement shall we say so all the seed potatoes and there was quite a few of them, all the, the little egg boxes that were all lined up like little soldiers. They've all been moved. So they've all been moved down to my office, my home office, which isn't as cold as the spare room, but it isn't as warm as the spare room is now. So we've moved them downstairs and it is just really the chilies that are in the, in the cupboard, in the grow cupboard that I've got set up with the grow light up there. So I've took them out. We've got the chilies in there. I've turned the heating on. It's not up like crazy mad hot. And the other thing I've done is I've moved the heat mat. So the heat mat that I've got, that's got the adjustable temperature on it. That's gone up there into the cupboard as well. So that's been set to around about 25 degrees. And the heating's on like notch number two on the little dial, whatever, whatever that equates to. The heating's on that. And I think that is what's been making the difference 
over the past sort of 10 days. So they've been getting enough light or maybe it's just a little bit of a, a little touch too much light, but I think they haven't been warm enough. So with the cranking up of the of the heating and the, the heat mats going in there for the for the little chili seedlings to go in and sort of sit on, I think that's really, really made the difference over the past sort of, like I said, around about a week, a week to 10 days when I've been worrying about this, this particular problem. And that's certainly, they're, they're definitely looking so, so, so much better. I mean, I know, like these ones here, the, the jigsaw brains are super, super hot. These ones here that you can see, I mean, they they will take a long time to grow, so I'm not expecting them to be to be massive just yet. And again, these pots, I'm a little bit worried about the pots swamping them. So we'll get these all potted up. So I'm hoping that the heat is the issue. So after all of that, how are things looking? Well, a lot better than they were 10 days ago, I'm pleased to say. Let me bring you them over here. So we've got our four different varieties of of chili, they're all all potted up into the nice new pots there. They do need a good drink. I mean, that compost, see, I've had it out in here with the little heat around it, it'll dry it out a little bit, so it needs some, it needs some water in it. So this, the sort of seed tray that they're in, that'll get some water in there. It'll soak up as much as it wants, drain the excess water off. Maybe, maybe the tiniest little bit of liquid feed. I might put a little bit of chili focus in the water there just so they've got a new nutrition going straight into the roots, perk them up a bit again, get them going on. So this lot here, they're going back in the house, nice and toasty warm in the cupboard where I've got all the growing stuff in there, under the grow light, and we'll come back, you know, maybe it's in a month's time or so, we'll see how they're looking. I'm hoping they're looking even better than they are now. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.